My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Win Today with your boy, Johnny Martin. So happy to be here today. Have a very, very exciting show on tap. First and foremost, as we always do to introduce the show, I'd like to thank my good friend from Cloud9 Marketing Group, Dylan Pilon. Dylan, how are you today, man? Very well. How are you today? Life is good, brother. Another beautiful day in New England. I'd also like to take a minute to thank another co-producer of the show from Seven Roads Media, Donnie Cab. What's up, Donnie? Hi, John. How are you today? Life is good, brother. Good. Very, right very here. excited. So for those of you that are tuning back in, I can't thank you enough on behalf of uh, the Win Today team, Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for all of your support thus far uh, your comments your feedback your support uh, has been absolutely overwhelming so i just wanted to take a minute from the bottom of my heart to thank you all for taking the time to engage with me on this platform as we work to inspire others to find their why and to win today before we get going today i'd just like to recognize our sponsor for this episode headquarter brand apparel you can find them at headquarter brand and online headquarterbrand.com we will, we will also link them in the show notes awesome thank you donnie we'll get them linked in the show notes as well a special thank you uh to my good friend coke and his united states marine corps team in san diego for being uh willing to sponsor the show and for embracing uh what we're trying to empower other people to do with that being said we are going to get right into it today i don't know if you remember folks uh, but when we started a few episodes ago, there was a, uh, an episode entitled The Motivation Station. And I kicked that episode off by sharing a story of one of my closest friends uh, to this day. This guy and I have been friends for over 20 years, and I shared the story with you relative to Coach Lou Holtz at the University of South Carolina. And I talked to you about my friend Kevin Turco and his dream of working for Coach Holtz um, and learning under Coach Holtz. Uh, and, and the feedback I got from that story and from that episode has already been phenomenal. So it made natural sense to me that I reached out to my good buddy, Kevin Turco, and asked him to be a guest on Win Today. With that being said, please welcome our good friend, uh, my lifelong friend, head football coach at the University of Lindenwood, Belleville in Belleville, Illinois, my man, Kevin Turco. What's up, Turk? And welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be here, uh, John. I'm honored and blessed to uh, be a part of this today. Man, I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to talk with you for for a while and, and share your journey with the folks out there, and, and hopefully they'll take something from this discussion that you and I have uh, that will resonate with them uh, and help them find their why. I think probably the best place to start, brother, is how are things going for you? How's the family? Uh, and how's life in Belleville, Illinois? I tell you, it's uh, it couldn't be better. Um, Everything is going wonderful. Melissa, my beautiful bride, um, is doing well. Um, she's working for the school district right now, and um, we're currently on spring break as a university, and get ready to kick off the 2018 spring practices starting at the end of next week. So, um, uh, life is great. No complaints. We feel uh, blessed just to be here each and every day. Awesome, and. Uh... We're going to get to it as we as we talk in the episode a little bit further, but the journey has certainly been exciting and roundabout to say the least. But please send Melissa my love and um, my best wishes from Amy and I and the kids, and um, we look forward to seeing you soon. Who knows? Maybe you'll come home for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the plan. Well, that's, that's been your plan. plan for the last fifteen years, and you've never made it home for Christmas. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Turk for right. Turk for the for the people that are listening, brother. Um, Sort of recap for them um, your journey, uh, sort of in, in sound bites, but I really think what will resonate most with them is if they hear the story of how you got attached to, Luke, to Coach Holtz and how your uh, coaching journey unfolded after that. So if you would, just take a few minutes and walk our guests through uh, your journey to meet Coach Holtz and, and um, subsequent coaching spots thereafter. Well, I... It's, it's, it's a long journey, uh, for sure. Um, you know, I it started uh, just growing up. I've always had a love for this game of football. Uh, I was never a good football player by any stretch. I, I tell all our recruits every day, I said, if you've got dreams of 
playing for a Hall of Fame football coach or a guy that has a record somewhere for anything but having the most minutes on scout team, I, I'm not the guy. I, but um, I've just always had an attraction to the game and, and all that it entails. And growing up, one of the key figures in my life was my grandfather. Um, I used to watch Lou Holtz when he was at the University of Notre Dame back in the 90s. And I just, for some reason, was always drawn to – how he operated and the, 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 the discipline and the kind of the hard nosed uh, approach of his organizations. Um, and it, it just, uh, it led to one thing to another. So, you know, getting out of college and living in Springfield, Massachusetts for heck no, a long time. I mean, you remember that, that was kind of a, uh, transitional period for me as well as I'm sure it was for you too. And, um, you know, living from basement to basement, it was kind of a rough period in my life. Um, and, there was that journey that we, you and I kind of sat down and we said, look, let's go to Boston for a weekend. Let's go up there and enjoy some time with some friends and get away from the hustle and bustle. And, and it's what we did. Yeah. And I was, was I was, you know, what's funny Turk is I was, when I was sharing the story about uh, going to Boston and I, I'm sure you'll probably get to it. And I don't, I'm sure you remember this cause we still laugh about it fondly is uh, we, we did not think, although we went on a fun trip to Boston, I think one of the catalysts for, um, maybe what happened after that was running into um, your ex. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Well, you know, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's because you, you know, it's crazy is that one thing I've learned, and, and we've talked about this. I mean, it's happened with you too. Is that it's when you least expect uh, that moment in your life to happen, where the lights come on, and you're willing willing to take the next step to be the very best that you can be. It's that's usually when it happens. And, and don't you think, yeah, weekend. no doubt. But don't you think that's also why some people never get there because that light goes on very quickly and it goes off very quickly as well. And if you yeah. don't capitalize on it, you may lose it forever. It, I agree with that. You know, and the thing is, I believe that we're all born with that light. I think every, I don't, I just, I can't believe God puts us on this earth to be average. I love, and I love I, it. I love it. And I just, and I just think that um, we all have that one thing that we've always wanted to do. It, and it could be being a, a, a salesman. It could be a doctor. It could be running a family business or whatever it may be. And somewhere along the line, I think more times than not, people get discouraged with naysayers and their own self-doubt and their own self-worth. And, and honestly, I've come to the conclusion that the only way to keep going forward is – the secret, I think, is to, A, have a lot of faith, but, two, surround yourself around people who genuinely care about you to keep you going. And that's where my blessing and fuel has been, was, has been with friends like yourself and your brother and your family and all the guys back home and uh, sure. all the support that I've gotten. Because um, it, would, it would be very, very easy along the way, not just your journey, but all of our journeys. Uh, it would be very, very easy for us to convince ourselves that what we were doing was crazy. We were never going to get where we wanted to go, especially with all of the doubt that's out there and the obstacles that stand in your way. No doubt. And it, the craziest thing is if you quit, it would actually be the norm. That's right. That's the thing that it, that is hard to fight because you're always going to have those people that say, well, hey, look, man. You gave it your best shot, don't you know? As opposed to having those people like yourself that are in my life and other people too that keep kicking the can a little bit further down the road and challenging you and sure. forcing you to just keep going and pushing through that fear of failure, etc. Getting on the other side of that pain and discomfort, and I know you and I could talk about this and have at length. But for the people that are listening, so you you we we go to Boston, we have some fun, and then sort of in, in a couple minutes, take them through that ride home, but more importantly, take the listener through your first meeting with Coach Holtz and, and what you did sort of after that. Because really what's important to me, Coach, and because I know the story, right? I've, I've, I've sort of feel like in my family and the people that know you the best, we've lived it with you. We've, we've been on this ride no with you. But for the people that are listening in their car right now or you know in their house and they're looking for that – and I don't like using the word motivation because it's fleeting, right? But how can we ignite that passion in them? How can we ignite that grit in them where they have where they have this persistence and passion over a long period of time where they can hear your story and go, man, you know what? Even though I might not want to be a, a football coach, 
I'm holding myself back from the things that I want to do so badly in my life. And the only person that's standing in the way is me. So if you could just walk them through sort of sure. your mindset over that, that ride home and then your ride and meeting to South Carolina, I think it would be awesome for our listeners. Well, I'll tell you, just to kind of piggyback on what you said, I think everyone has that passion, John. I really do. I, it's getting past that fear. It's getting past that moment where are you willing to put yourself out there, just like what you're doing with this podcast. It takes a whole lot of courage to put your nose out there and say, this is what I want to do, and I want it to be the best at what it is. So uh, I just want to I'd say that I really believe everyone has that. Sure. But that I, I agree. Was, uh, I, I agree with you. Yeah, that that night was uh, was life changing. And you know, what's amazing is, you know, I remember walking in. The, the bar was called the Harp. I, I, you know, that was a moment in my life when I did drink. I don't anymore, but I did. And uh, we were young, and um, I think I was unemployed at the time, and I was living from basement to basement. So this was kind of a period of time where we were just trying to get our minds off of things. But I remember walking into that bar and thinking that I was going to see uh, my ex Kelly that night. And Great girl, uh, not, not one negative thing to say about her whatsoever, but it was just a moment where we happened to bump into each other and haven't seen each other for three months. And um, and when she asked me what I was doing with my life, I wasn't about to tell her that I didn't have a job and I was driving this 88 Delta at red velvet seats. The car was awesome. It, it was awesome, yeah. <laughs> and, and that, you know, that breaking up when he was probably a good idea, you know, I just something. Yeah, she made a great decision. My, she did. She did. You know why? Because I met the most beautiful woman in my life. Yeah, it worked I, out. I'm, which is my wife. <laughs> so, but um, you know, she asked me what I was doing in my life, and I, I something from my gut just came out, and I said I was going to go work for Lou Holtz at the University of South Carolina and and someday become a head coach and win a championship. And, um, you know, and the look on her face, um, I, she wasn't cruel and she wasn't, uh, demeaning, but there was a shock of disbelief. Sure. And it was at that moment. You know, it was the, and honestly, at that moment, I was responsible for that look because what have I done up to that point to back up anything what I just said? And I hadn't done anything. It was just something I've always wanted to do. So, well, I remember we were driving home that next day, and I was hungover. Um, and you know, you asked me. He said, "Hey, Turk." He said, uh, "You know, you're kind of down. What's up?" I said, "Well, you know, when I told Kelly what I was going to do, um, you know, she kind of." didn't believe me and kind of laughed a little bit, but it's, I'm responsible for that. And, and you said, well, maybe so. I said, well, what are you going to do about it? And I said, I'm going to go down to university of South Carolina. I'm going to meet with Lou Holtz. I'm going to tell him my dreams and things I want to accomplish. And, uh, and you said, wonderful. You didn't bat an eye. That was the most, be- you didn't even bat an eye. I remember the look on your face inside. I was probably inside. If I remember correctly, I was probably saying this dude has officially lost his mind. He's going to do what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's plenty of people at that moment, including myself, that would question the same thing. But, sure. Um, you know, sometimes I think that when you're, um, maybe you're at a disadvantage or at least in the business that I'm in with coaching football, you know, there's people that are great athletes and they have all the right names behind them and the right people that are pulling for them. And, um, and God bless them. They should use those resources. Those are gifts that God gave them. But, you know, I didn't have them. It doesn't make me any less or more than anybody else. But sometimes when you don't have those advantages, you got to do something that's outside the norm. You have to be able to will do something that uh, other people will see either you, that's not the way you're supposed to do it or – um, it's never going to, it's never going to work. It's going to, it's going to blow up in your face. You're crazy. Yeah. All no of the doubt. things that you probably had dancing in your own mind too, but still, sure. de- still decided to go nonetheless. Well, yeah. And I remember when I dropped you off at your house, um, we've talked about this. I re- constantly remind you through text cause I've always thinking about it. And, uh, when I have good moments and bad moments, I always remember this moment when, you were standing at the front door of your parents' house, and I was driving away, and you said, Turk, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to the basement that I was living in and maybe take a nap and think on what I was saying. And you said, Turk, if you don't go now, you'll never go. And, you know, I think about that. Me too, um, man. There was ever a, Me too. There was ever a defining moment in my life uh, besides, you know, becoming a Marine and marrying my wife. That was that moment because if you hadn't said that, if I didn't have that one special person in my life that was willing to push me, uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Yeah, it's, we it, really wouldn't be. It was an amazing trip and an amazing journey since you know. And for the people that are listening, 
I hope what what resonates with you is that it may take something way outside of your comfort zone, way outside of what you're used to doing, way outside of what people think is acceptable for you to get where you want to go. But remember, you're filling the pages of your book. You get to write it any way you want. And I think for you, Turk, that was really the start of you writing your book as an adult and the way that you wanted to write it. You know, you, you, you cut the cuffs off of, and we'll get to it a little bit later on, but you know, I well versed around your family situation and the troubles you had in school, the learning disabilities, the fact that people, some people in your family told you you're joining the Marine Corps. I can't believe you're doing that. You're never going to make it. You end up being an honor grad uh, at Paris Island, South Carolina, becoming a Marine and then chasing this, this dream, which has become a reality of coaching. I think in that moment for you, if I'm guessing, is that's when it was like, you know what? F it. I'm getting in the car. And if I remember right, you went back to your place where you had some stuff. You packed a gym bag with like a shaving bottle, uh, whatever money you had. And then your dress. $300. Your, and your dress that's blue it. Marine Corps uniform, right? I, it's exactly what happened. Yeah. And uh, so and, take, uh, take us to South Carolina. Bring us down there, man. Yeah, so I uh, I got in that 88 Delta. You know, this was back in the late 90s. I did, you know, there was no GPSs. I had never driven that far in my life, but I, I think it was either you or it had to have been you. And you said, hey, look, all you got to do is take I-95 straight. <laughs> hey, listen, like, you know as well as I do, it definitely wasn't me because I get lost going to Cape Cod. So <laughs> somebody else gave yeah, you the directions. Yeah, we're headed to the islands, no question. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Great memories. Great memories. Yeah, indeed, Boy, man. those were the days. Uh, they sure yeah. were. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, what's amazing is, um, you know, just kind of, I want us to take a step back. I, I don't want to portray my family as I, I grew up in a, in a rough upbringing. I don't, I, I feel very blessed, um, for all the things that God's given me and things that maybe have not have worked out with my family to this day, but sure. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. And I'm thankful because I had so much more than what some people now being in this business and seeing how some of the players I have come from. Um, I just don't want to portray that as right, and no doubt, and, more than what it was. And I think it's a, a beautiful perspective too. And when I was sharing that, I think it was more specific to uh, the struggles you had in school, sure. and then sure. probably the distance, some of which you created on your own, relative to um, no doubt the family no dynamic. You know, but no doubt. But whether it was self doubt that you know, whether it was the Marine Corps or coaching or playing or doubt that you felt from somewhere, it's certainly a part of your journey, nonetheless. You know. No, no, yeah, no doubt. But you know, when I get on 995, um, you know, it's funny. It's like anything else in life. You know, whether you're starting a new workout routine or whether you start a new diet or a new job, or whatever. It's like you get on that first mile of the road and you're fired up. I mean, you got the coffee going, uh, the music's blasting, and you're going out to change the world. And but you know what? That ride was 16 hours, and by hour number five or hour number six. Um, you know, you start thinking, well, I've come a long way uh, as, you know, you're pulling off the exit and you get more gas. It's like, uh, do I, you know, have I made my point? Or do I keep going or, you know, all that self-doubt starts settling in. And I think that's all, um, you know, relevant to other things in life too. Of and course, so man. It's, and everybody, you know, to your point, it's not just you get into South Carolina. It's, it's the thought of I'm driving today. It's the 10 hours into the trip where you're like, what am I yeah. doing? But but still pushing through. And that's that's the thing on this platform too, Turk, is that and, and you know this, we talk all the time, but but that's the thing that that is my biggest hope and prayer on this platform is that the people that I talk to or the experiences that I share from my own life, it, it isn't because we've always gotten it right. I'm still trying to figure it out. You're still trying to figure it out. But it's in these little micro moments where ninety nine percent of people decide to hang it up and dial it in sure others that that one percent continue to push through whether it's the first hour of the trip the 10th hour of the trip or when you finally pull in to the football complex in south carolina where you're like you know what i've come this far let me just take another yeah. step and i think people no, can no. people can make that correlation with anything that they're doing in their life sure sure yeah and pushing down i-95 south it was like Every exit I passed was a small victory. It really was. And, um, you know, and, and it's funny, too, like, 
it's weird how I think God plays a huge factor. I'm you know, like yourself, John. I mean, we're both extremely deep in our faith. Very imperfect people, but we are deep in our faith. Sure. We're just trying to make it like everybody else. And um, it's just sometimes it's amazing how I think sometimes God intervenes. And um, you know, when you are sitting at an exit and you're thinking about going back north, but you said you wanted to go south, and you feel like that's what you're supposed to do. And a certain song comes on that reminds you of your grandfather. And I, I don't. I think those things. Everyone at one point or another have experienced at those moments, and we can't um, we, we can't pass them out off as coincidences. Right. I think that there are things that are out there that are helping us. And so as we moved through I-95 and got down to South Carolina, I, I never had done it before where I'd driven that far and got a hotel by myself, and I ended up checking into one of the more expensive hotels that I realize now I didn't realize <laughs> then, you know, which is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, it's the craziest thing. I mean, I, I could have saved so much money, and I would have – you know, on my way back, I didn't have enough money for tolls in New York City, and so I just. What did you do? Just burn? Enough, did you just burn through them? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't burn through them. No, no. But I sat there with traffic like eight miles long. Explained them like, hey, look, you can sit there and demand it all you want, but I, you, but I you can't want give it to you. Snickers bar. I got a Snickers bars here. I haven't eaten. Do you want that? But I don't have any money. You know, and I don't remember what happened when I had to give him my address or whatever. But it was right when we were getting on the George Washington Bridge and. I was willing to get out of the car and walk off because I could not give them any money. Oh, that is you know? awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. And so, so but, before, you know, the next, yeah, before, ahead. before we go to break Turk, I, if you, if you could like take them to that meeting with coach Holtz and, and the conversation, um, because I think it's just such an awesome, awesome story. It's like the culmination of, of a lot of years of thinking about this, this journey. And then finally saying, you know what? I'm driving South and I'm going to meet this dude. I, the, the next day I was in my car and I, I, I left that hotel in my Marine Corps uniform on and I had been writing a book about my life that was summed up in eight pages, which is obviously a very exciting life. <laughs> but I wrote my book. I called it my book. It ended in eight pages and I, it was detailed now too. Now, And so I was driving down what, is, what I know now is Rosewood Drive and there was a man on the side of the road with long scraggly hair. I don't know if he was homeless or whatever it may be, but I just rolled down the window and I said, sir, I said, can you tell me where the Gamecocks play their football games? And he said, yeah, just go over that little hill right there, and to the left you'll see williams Price Stadium. And sure enough, that's what it was. And, you know, if you have never been there, um, you know, it's a stadium that holds 86,000 people. It's impressive. It's intimidating, to say the least, um, being that fact that I, had not, I hadn't coached anything but, you know, freshman high school football to that point. Sure, so, sure. Um, you know, pulling up to the stadium, I got out, and the, the, the gate was open, and there was a grounds crew guy there, and I – say sir can i take a look at the, the stadium and he said just stay off the grass and i walked in there and you know you see flags like tennessee and florida and alabama and uh georgia and these you know these sec powerhouse football programs that you know their flags are flying around the stadium and coming from you know a, a freshman high school program where all i knew how to do was yell but that's it because i didn't know the plays um sure. you know it's kind of a little bit intimidating but um, I walked around and I, I kind of prayed. I knew that I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't have a lot of money. And when I looked up, it said the football building, the Floyd football building. And I said, well, obviously I would think that's a good place to start to find this guy because <laughs> here's the thing, coach, as you know, I had never met him before in my life. Oh, no, it, no. He, he didn't know that Kevin Turco even, even existed. No, no. You know, and so I went to the second and you floor, certainly, And you certainly didn't have an appointment. No, no. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. John, is that I wouldn't have gotten one. That's right. I had to go make one myself. That's right. And I think that's such and, a it's such a such a powerful statement. I, I want that to sit with people because the truth of the matter is you probably wouldn't have gotten one. Um, and so you had to do something different to get in front of them. No doubt. Um, I got up to the I'm going to shorten the story a little bit, but I got to the third floor and I uh, walked out and you know, Rita, um, Ricard was the secretary, sweet, sweet lady. And she asked me if she could help me. I said, and I said, look, I don't have a lot of time. I only have $300 to my name. I've come a long way from Boston, Massachusetts in pursuit of my dream to work for Lou Holtz. Can I speak with him? Wow. And that is, the, and, and I, I, I promise you, this is not embellished. I mean, this is exactly Oh, what I happened. know it isn't. Cause I've read about it from coach Holtz, uh, uh, you know, yeah. along your coaching journey, and he recounts no it. He recounts it the, the same way as you are right now. He, he does, and, uh, and so she kind of looked at me. and said, "He's in a meeting. Can you wait?" And I remember looking at her, and I said, "He's here." 
Like, because I, I mean, I, did I just get it right on the first try? Like, how <laughs> That's never that? happened for you. <laughs> and, and never since either. Yeah, right. Like, I, just, I made one straight shot and found where he is. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. And yeah. so she said, yeah. So I, I sat down on this, this little sofa and I got a little emotional. And she kind of said, you know, can, you know, can I help you? And here's this Marine that's sitting there with this letter, you know, that which I called my book. And, uh, and I had tears in my eyes a little bit. She said, can I help you, sir? And I said, I just, I don't know. This is a big moment for me. I said, I've, um, I think most of my life, I've either myself or other people may have put limitations on me, which I am responsible. For. I'm responsible for my own limitations, but I'm trying to break out of them right now. And I just feel that like this is a big moment for me. And, uh, so next thing you know, the door opens up and I'm looking behind her desk and his son, who I ended up working for down the road, who's a, uh, incredible human being and like family to me skip Holtz. um you know he walked out of the office to me kind of looked and saw a marine standing there you know and um uh, but anyways and she walked in and came out and said he'll meet with you in just a few minutes and i you know it's when you sit there and you're like what the hell am i doing sure like like i'm I, have i gone too far with this yeah. you know <laughs> like i'm actually here and, and what uh, exactly am i going to do when i walk through his door so, so, I had no idea. Right, right. I had no idea I was going to play that one by ear. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's down, the best I, way. Yeah, because maybe deep down, maybe I think I'd even really get in there. Sure, you know? and, sure. Uh, he came out, and uh, he looked at me, and he, he said, come in, just like that. And I remember I got up, and I, I ran. Like, I, I, I didn't know what else to do, you know? And full sprint. I literally ran. Yeah, full sprint. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I didn't want him to change his mind. <laughs> And uh, you I gotta take it, you gotta take advantage of the opportunity when it presents itself. No doubt. And so, uh, you know, she shut the door behind me, and it was just me and him. And he's standing on one side of his desk, and I'm on the other. And I, you know, I'm like my my, you know, my hands are clenched. I got my book. I'm in Marine Corps uniform, uh, uniform, and my eyes are tearing. That's and a I could beautiful, just picture man. him. I could just picture him like trying to reach underneath his desk, like. You know, like a like a bank would for like security. You know, <laughs> to press I can only imagine he back in to... his mind. He was like, "What the hell did I just allow in my office?" He's gonna press the <laughs> secret button. <laughs> yeah, like like I'm I'm getting nervous. You know, or like a trap door opens up and I just disappear because I'm a threat. I don't know. You never know. Oh, you know? This, is, this is great. <laughs> I mean, I could just imagine. And so, but he didn't though. That's the most amazing thing, John. He didn't. A guy as busy as him, as accomplished as him was willing to give me time and he didn't even know my story and why I was there to begin with. And I'll never forget that as long as I live. You know, we talk about this all the time on the, on the show too, Turk. We talk about this notion of time and how it, it costs nothing, but, but it's the most priceless gift you can ever give another human being because you exchange part of your life for it. No and, doubt. and uh, so when you took a second to step back there and explain to all of us that, Everything that you thought was going to happen, i.e. you wouldn't find the stadium, you wouldn't get in, nobody would meet with you. He certainly didn't know who you were, didn't know why you were there. But at the end of the day, you took a chance and a person who you'd never met in your life and who didn't have to give you the time gave you the most precious gift on this planet because we exchange a part of our life for it, and that's time. What I want to do is, um, for those of you that are listening, um, we are going to take uh, a very short break. And when you tune into the next episode of Win Today with Johnny Martin, you're going to hear about the meeting with Coach Turco and Lou Holtz. You're going to hear about Coach Turco's current philosophy and expectations around being a leader of men at a great university. You're going to hear about the non-negotiables. Uh, in T Coach Turco's life, and you're going to hear about the plan, not just as a coach, but as a successful and significant human being. We thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of Win Today, and please tune in next time when we continue our conversation with Coach Kevin Turco from Lindenwood University, Belleville, in Belleville, Illinois. Be good to those you love. Let them know you love them. This is Johnny Martin saying thank you very much and win today. Thank you to Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. 
I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget, win today.